With the NFL Combine concluding, it's time to take a look at another 2023 NFL mock draft. There's been a lot of guys that have shown out and made names for themselves. And it's time to take a look at what teams are going to move up, what teams are going to draft certain players. And we already made some trades early on. The Colts move up to take the Chicago Bears first pick. And then the Panthers move into the third spot to take the Arizona Cardinals pick. So we see some shuffling already. So now we dive into that. The quarterback position to me is going to be interesting because Anthony Richardson started off with a great showing in the NFL combine. You saw the frame, you saw the explosiveness, and it's going to be really hard, honestly, for teams to pass on him because you're going to see someone who is extremely talented. The ceiling is really, really high. You're seeing a guy who, again, tremendous talent. And it's going to be tough for teams to pass on him. But when it comes down to it, some teams may think that they need someone who's a little bit more solid, a little bit more proven. And that's where a guy like Bryce Young, despite being 5'10", is going to get the nod. So I think that Bryce Young is going to get where Indianapolis wants. They'll move up for him and they will take him first overall if Indianapolis decides to move up. Again, this is really interesting because... Unless you, if you're in on Will Levis, if you're a team that's in on Will Levis and Anthony Richardson, then you have four options. So if you're in the top four, there's really not a too much of a worry. That's where the Texans, I think, will stay put. I I don't think they have a reason to move up. There's not a single guy here in that, at least between, if you're picking between Bryce Young and CJ Stroud in terms of being guys that are proven. If you want to go with the potential of Anthony Richardson or Will Levis, then that's fine. That even just proves my point there too, where you're you really don't need to do anything if you're Houston. You can just sit back and let one of these guys fall to you. Whether you want the the proven commodity that is CJ Stroud, or if you're shooting for the stars and want to go with Anthony Richardson, I think either one brings excitement to that franchise because of his showing. And it's hard because I don't want to overreact to an NFL combine when we have an entire year, a year's worth of tape to look at. But it's going to be tough for me to see a guy like Anthony Richardson fall past the third pick at this point. I think that teams and it's not necessarily because I think he's the third best player. I think it's because teams are going to push and buy into that potential. So just for just for fun, we're going to go Anthony Richardson at number two to the Houston Texans. That's going to be really fun to see in that offense. And then it leaves openings for Carolina. I think that Carolina is in a great position to move up. I don't think that Sam Darnold is the answer. Now, the one thing I will say is if they don't want to move up and give up a bunch of capital, they can just sit around, let Sam Darnold be that guy if they're going to go with him, or if they just keep the guys on their roster and go with one of those two guys and play the Caleb Williams, Drake May sweepstakes then that's just fine. But if they want to move up and they're proving that they want to win sooner rather than later, they're going to trade up. And if CJ Stroud is available, there's no reason why they won't take him. I don't think drafting Will Levis this high is still a smart move just because he has a strong arm. I think that the the potential is there, but I think when you're looking at these, the top three guys, it's easily these top three guys and then Will Levis. I think that there is a gap that can't be merged or closed just from a combine or anything like that. So then we get to Chicago. Chicago's in a great place to potentially move down once, at least once. I, I think they would be it would be ridiculous for them to not move down. Yes, guys like Will Anderson and Jalen Carter are going to be available at this top spot, and teams might trade up over them to get them. But I think when you're looking at what Chicago needs to do. They need to build for the future. So trading back once gives them more picks, and that's really nice. I think that trading back twice, if possible, would be a huge, huge addition and a huge win for the franchise. For this draft, though, they only move back once. And given that we mentioned those other two guys, it comes down to Will Anderson Jr. Now, Jalen Carter has some off-field issues that still have to get sorted out. So that's going to be interesting to see how much that affects his draft stock. For that reason, we're going to see him drop a little bit in this one. But Will Anderson is going to go there. Just too hard of of a pick to move past, a prospect to move past and look past. And Chicago is going to be very happy with what they get there. Now Seattle 
is in a similar position where they need some D-line help. Again, I don't know how teams are going to react to the Carter news. So we're going to just hold off a little bit. I still think he's a first round pick. I still think that he has the potential to go top 10, but I think you're looking at maybe Seattle leading Miles Murphy more than Jalen Carter. So it'll be fun to see what teams will do when it comes to Jalen Carter, because I think that it's, you get it kind of a, maybe not fun, but it's a, it's a way to see how teams evaluate certain, certain prospects and certain events that happen. It's going to be interesting to see what teams think of what just happened and whatnot. So now we move on to Detroit. Detroit's in a position where I think they can look past quarterback. They can move past quarterback for now. I, if they are serious about the quarterback position, I believe they move up. But with two first round picks, too, they have the ability to keep both of those and still move up, giving up other draft capital. But I think for now, we're going to look elsewhere. We're going to look on the defensive side of the ball. Cornerback is a really exciting position for Detroit with Jeff Okuda already there. And you you could add in a talent like Christian Gonzalez, Joey Porter Jr. Devin Witherspoon is making a lot of noise when it comes down to it. I just had Thor Nystrom on talking about Devin Witherspoon, and that is his CB1 for this draft. Devin Witherspoon may not have the height or the freakish talent that other of these guys do, but you're looking at players that can really play. I think Christian Gonzalez in the combine made a name for himself. It's going to be tough for, to see teams pass on him. I don't believe he goes outside of the top 10. So I believe that Detroit's going to take a corner here. They take Christian Gonzalez. That gives that defense plenty of excitement. Then you move to the Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Las Vegas Raiders and Las Vegas needs some help as well. A quarterback could be one, but I, I just, it doesn't seem that they're going to do that. There are rumors that Jimmy Garoppolo is on their radar. So we're going to look elsewhere. A team, again, that needs help on the defensive side of the ball. Cornerback could be a way they go. The player that I've seen them link to more is a guy like Tyree Wilson. This is a freakish player who has a lot of potential. And you look at Anthony Richardson on the offensive side of the ball. Tyree Wilson has the potential to be really, really good on defense. And with... Las Vegas needing help at the position, kind of a good match to be able to go forward with. Atlanta is another team with the need to draft a corner, if you ask my opinion. And again, it's going to be so easy to draft corners because you see so much talent. And the, the combine reminded of that, us of that. You're looking at plenty of corners that showcase their talent, their explosiveness, and you really can't go wrong. There's a lot of depth at this position. Joey Porter Jr., really good player. Atlanta needs someone opposite of Terrell. I th I think that's just something you need to do. Kind of similar to what Detroit is doing. You add another corner to give them a good one-two combo. If Tyree Wilson is not available, then you're, you know, then you're looking at maybe corner more so than those other positions. Joey Porter Jr. would be a good option. Devin Witherspoon would be a good option. We're going to go Witherspoon here. I think that the excitement with his game, maybe a little bit more proven over potential. So that it's something to keep an eye on Arizona moving back. Now they need help on the defensive line and it could be, this is where the Jalen Carter conversation gets interesting because how far does he drop because of what happened? How far does he go down in the first round? I I would be shocked if he leaves the first round. There's just no way that it's how things are. And Arizona needing help on the defensive line is going to give them – it's going to be tough, honestly, to look past a talent like Jalen Carter because he's so good on the field. Now, obviously, it depends on what happens off the field. So to stop talking about it, we'll just draft Jalen Carter to the Cardinals, be able to fall down the nine, get more draft capital, and still draft a talent like that. That is a good place to be if you ask my opinion. Then we move to the Philadelphia Eagles. We were reminded of some of their needs in the Super Bowl against Kansas City. You're looking at a team that could use help at corner. It's going to sound like you're a broken record when you talk about teams and what they need. Everybody seems to need a corner. And with a guy like Joey Porter Jr. still available, with James Radbury and Darius Slay able to kind of mentor him, it's tough to see them taking anything but a corner here because of the talent. Now there are some guys that stand out over the rest, but it's going to be tough, honestly, for teams to move past 
cornerback position because of the amount of depth at the position that is still available. Now we move on to Tennessee. Tennessee obviously let Taylor Lee one go. They need a tackle that's going to protect Ryan Tannenhill. Some are thinking they maybe are going for the Caleb Williams, Drake May sweepstakes. Still, you're going to need someone to protect the quarterback for the long run. Paris Johnson Jr. gives you exactly that. Houston is back up again, and this is why I also think that they don't move up because they don't want to give up two top 12 picks. Though That's a great position to be in, especially having the number two pick. Like I said, let someone move up and waste waste that draft capital or give up that draft capital to try and move up. You are in a good place to be at number 12 and number two. Don't give any of that up because you're going to have a great draft if you keep both of those picks. Now, when you look at what Houston is going to need, you already addressed the quarterback position. Edge and wide receiver are in the next two where you're looking at maybe helping your quarterback that you just got and also looking at the defensive side of the ball, adding some players that could get after the opposing quarterback. Quentin Johnson, to me, you know, I think some people are trying to, it, when it gets closer to the draft, you're trying to find what's right and what's wrong with players. And Quentin Johnson, to me, you can find whatever you want. This dude can play. And when you, you look at Anthony Richardson and Quentin Johnson, you have a great one-two punch in this mock draft to be able to get this offense going. Now you look at New York. New York is in, in the sweepstakes for Aaron Rodgers, maybe Derek Carr. So maybe they don't have a first round pick because they'll trade it in order to get one of those guys. Uh, if, if Derek Carr is a free agent, then you obviously don't need to trade anything there. If you have to trade with Green Bay, you're obviously giving up that 13th pick. It's interesting. So if say that you don't have to give up this pick, then you look at, again, honestly, the defensive side of the ball is very intriguing for a lot of teams. New York is not exempt from that. I think if you wanted to move back to get a guy like Brian Branch, he fits in really well. One thing I will say is regardless of who's playing quarterback, you need someone to protect them. And I think tackle is a position that needs some help. George Fan is out and Mackay Becton is still up in the air of what they want with him. So Broderick Jones coming in gives them a solid tackle, someone that's going to really make life easy for even if it is Zach Wilson, if it's Derek Carr, if it's Aaron Rodgers, you're going to need to protect them regardless of who it is. Now we move on to New England, another team. It just sounds like a broken record, but needs help at cornerback, needs help at a few other positions, wide receiver, linebacker. There are great options here. Jordan Addison is still available. But I think a guy that they're going to love more, someone who is going to rise up draft boards, when you look at it, is a guy like Zay Flowers. Strong showing at the Combine, an actually absolutely explosive player, kind of fits of what the Patriots are looking to do in terms of who they draft, kind of guys that are off the radar. Zay Flowers is the perfect option for them, gives Mac Jones a guy that can separate and create explosive plays. Then you get to Green Bay. If Green Bay hangs on to Aaron Rodgers, they're obviously still keeping this pick. But if they don't, they might need to look at the quarterback position that's where Will Levis still being available could come into play. But the fact that he, if Aaron Rodgers stays and they want to build around him, wide receiver, tight end could be a couple options. Christian Watson is a good player. I think adding a guy that will remind people of Devontae Adams is going to be a, a good pick. You look at Jordan Addison and what he is capable of doing. He is someone that creates separation on a regular basis, someone that is very good at making guys look foolish, and that's going to make Aaron Rodgers very happy, and I think that's the biggest goal is to keep your quarterback in a good position where he wants to stay, where he wants to win another championship, and giving him weapons on the outside is a great place to do that. Washington, I don't know how confident they should be and if, if there are rumors that Lamar Jackson is going there, so maybe that they're with that being said, we're probably not going quarterback, even though, again, Will Levis is available. I just don't see uh, unless they don't get Lamar Jackson, then Will Levis is an option. We're going to assume that something happens there. So we're going to look elsewhere. They need help on the defensive side of the ball. It seems kind of, again, redundant to keep saying this. But there's so many explosive options. Cam Smith is still available. Keith Ringo is a guy that might have fallen down. Emmanuel Forbes is a little bit small, but Deontay Banks is explosive. So many guys that they could have. You look at what else they could need at at the defensive side of the ball. Linebacker and edge are our players that 
could be added as well. A player that I think fits well into what they want to do is Trenton Simpson, someone who can get from sideline to sideline really quickly. Very athletic player, a good addition to that defense. Then you look at Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is a group that it's, to me, really fun. There's a lot of potential especially on defense. I think they have good pieces there. TJ Watt, Minka Fitzpatrick. The offense could use some help in terms of giving Kenny Pickett some guys to throw the ball to. Now, Calvin Austin coming back from injury is going to be huge for them. I think he's going to be a stud if he can stay healthy. George Pickens has potential. You kind of have to wait it out with them. Then you look at what else they need. You need to protect the quarterback at offensive tackle. Edge could be a, a position they add, cornerback as well. When you look at those positions and what's available, honestly, there's a lot of good guys on the edge that I would love adding. I'm also tempted to add a guy like Brian Brissy to that defense. But again, there are so many options where you need to be smart about what you're going after because there's plenty of talent available, but you can't just go after, you know, if you have a big need, which protecting the quarterback is going to be huge. Kenny Pickett needs some time to throw. Wide receiver is not as big of a need as it might seem, it, assuming that Calvin Austin and George Pickens turn out to be what they want. A guy that can really help is Dewan Jones, absolute monster in terms of size. Great player to add to that offense to protect that quarterback. Then Detroit is up again. This is, again, this is why you sit tight. If your team's like Houston and Detroit, you sit tight, you hang on to both picks, and you add talent to help your team even more now when you look at what we we already addressed the cornerback position safety is a need linebacker tight end trading tj hawkinson meant that you are allowing the tight end position to kind of take a step back how do you build that up you can add a player like michael mayer late in the draft when you're looking at linebacker if trenton simpson was available i think i'd go with him here Drew Sanders is interesting because he's kind of like Trenton Simpson. Henry Toto is a very intelligent player as well. But I'm going to go a little bit different. I think Michael Mayer is a good addition to that offense. Gives them more explosive, more of a reliable player, uh, both in a, as a pass catcher and as a run blocker. So that's another great pick that I like. Tampa Bay, you're looking at a rebuild there. There could be a quarterback that gets brought in now that Tom Brady is done. They need some help on both sides of the ball on the edge though is a player that i think a lot of people are going to get higher on is lucas van ness out of iowa he is a freakish player that can make a huge impact for a lot of teams and i think that tampa bay needs some help at multiple positions only can pick one guy with one pick so you go with a need that's going to help this defense quite a bit seattle another team with two first round picks another team that really needs to stay put You look at what we added for Seattle. We already have Miles Murphy on the edge. What else could we add to this defense? Maybe you look at a corner, a defensive tackle, offensively, a guard or a wide receiver. There are a lot of exciting options. Honestly, one that I'm really tempted to do because Tyler Lockett is on the roster, Josh Downs is already a monster in terms of uh, working out of the slot. He can learn so much from Tyler Lockett. And for that reason, I'm letting Seattle take him there. Obviously, you could go with guys like Osiris Torrance. You could go with other wide receivers. You could go to the defensive side of the ball and take a corner. But Josh Downs, to me, could learn a lot from Tyler Lockett and become exactly what Tyler Lockett was for this and, and still is for the Seahawks. The Chargers. It, I, it's really hard for me to not take a wide receiver, given that the the health concerns – at that position for this team, you're looking at some some really talented players on this roster at wide receiver, but they just can't stay healthy. You need guys that can get Justin Herbert, get over, open for Justin Herbert, and give them a chance to move the ball down the field. Now, when you look at the guys available, there are some really talented options. You also look at tight end. There's some talented options there. They need someone to protect the quarterback. Darnell Wright is someone that could be Really good. Peter Karonsky is a versatile player that could help. Anton Harrison measured a little bit shorter wingspan than people were expecting, but another guy that could step up and be what they need. When you look at what else they need, we're looking at the defensive side of the ball, just like everybody else, a corner. Everybody needs a corner. Everybody needs, everybody needs something. On the edge is another 
group that is really talented. We're going to stick to giving Justin Herbert a great, a great potential to be explosive. A guy like Jackson Smith and Jigba is a first round talent still, despite the hamstring injury. I think he's going to be really good for now. We're going to go with Jalen Hyatt, uh, a player that was really explosive at the combine and showcase what he could do. Baltimore is interesting because if they don't have Lamar Jackson, this changes how we look at what they need. Team needs are going to change once teams trade, once teams hit free agency and pick guys and whatnot. So when we're looking at what Baltimore needs, let's assume that Lamar is still there. Wide receiver is a need. Cornerback is still a need. I don't know how, how if you're looking at what do you want more? Because if Marcus Peters is still around, cornerback isn't as big of a positional need. But if he is gone to free agency, you're going to need some help uh, on that side of the ball. I, I think it's still a good idea. Not a player. And I think a guy like Deontay Banks, who's really making a lot of noise, is an option you could see here. But I think Cam Smith's versatility, the fact that he can play in the slot and out wide, gives them a player that can play with both Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters. I think that's just a, a no-brainer to me. Then you go to Minnesota. Minnesota is interesting as well because they're currently working on Adam Thielen's contract. Justin Jefferson needs some help in terms of getting someone else to catch the football to take some pressure away from him. Shocker, they also need a cornerback. I think with the cornerbacks available right now, you almost kind of stay put with that position. Also with what you drafted last year, I don't know if you necessarily need a corner as much as people think. Wide receiver... I think that you have to look at someone like a Jackson Smith and Jigba that you could add as well. I also believe that another player that I really want to look at is John Michael Schmitz from Minnesota, from the Golden Gophers, because he can play center. Now, if Garrett Bradbury is the answer, then that's fine, but they still need help at guard. And guess who also can play guard? That is John Michael Schmitz. And I know that's not the greatest pick. It may not be the most exciting pick, but it's something that Minnesota definitely needs. It's something they need help with. And John Michael Schmitz is going to be an absolute mauler in that interior offensive line. That's exactly what they need to get this offense going. We'll add some exciting players in the next few rounds, maybe make some picks to add some more draft picks. But right now you got to go with a need that is a big need. That's going to help Kirk cousins quite a bit. Jacksonville, They just franchise tagged Evan Ingram. So tight end is no longer a need in the first round. You maybe look at that later. But then when you look at what they need, again, cornerback, safety, a player that I think is going to fit well into kind of mixing both of those. We talked about him earlier, and that's Brian Branch. Brian Branch has the ability to play safety. He has the ability to play nickelback. You can move him around a lot of different places. A guy like Antonio Johnson can kind of do the same thing. I'm going to go with Brian Branch based off his reliability. He was one of the highlights of an Alabama defense that was relatively underwhelming. So that's what I'm going to go with here. New York, I have an idea of what I want here. Cornerback and running back could be positional needs. If Saquon Barkley is back, that is still up in the air as well. You could go B. John Robinson here. You could go with the cornerback. But again, kind of like the Vikings, I don't know if you want to go take a a chance on some of these guys that are extremely explosive that you could. The nice thing with depth, you can get these guys later in the second round or a third round, even for some of them. So I think you're looking at on the offensive side of the ball, Osiris Torrance being available. I think he's the perfect pick for New York. I think he is the, a great option for a giants offense that needs to create more explosive plays. Now you could add a wide receiver. That's going to help with that. Uh, that'd be fine, but you can also, again, get those players later. So right now, Cyrus Torrance to me is, is the good pick for them. Dallas is interesting too, because they're, they think they're going to franchise tag Tony Pollard and that's going to create a, a good option. He's coming off injury. You also need help on the defensive side of ball. Now, cornerback again, everybody needs a corner, yada, yada, yada. Brian Brissy being available. I don't know how I can keep letting him drop. He is someone that is at 6'5", 300 pounds, extremely explosive, extremely talented, extremely 
underrated. I think everybody's kind of looking at Jalen Carter and obviously he's really, really good, but Brian Brissy kind of gets forgotten about because of who, who is in front of him. So that's a great option for Dallas Buffalo here. Another team that needs help at safety. I really want to give them Bijan Robinson because that offense would just be stupid good. But I, th- I think that we're going to hold off for now. And that's really hard for me to say because Bijan Robinson is a top 10 talent. It's just that his position makes him not a top 10 player it may, and a top 10 pick. And that's unfortunate, but it would be really fun to put him here. But I, I think we have to go to a guy we just talked about in Antonio Johnson gives them versatility in their defense, gives them someone who can play multiple different positions. Maybe just stick at safety for now, but eventually you can move him around. Cincinnati could love to have a guy like Darnell Washington, someone who is going to turn heads regardless of any numbers that he was going to post. I don't think that was any surprise, but you could also look at the defensive side of the ball. A guy like BJ Ojolari is really underrated. I don't think we're talking about him enough. Even Nolan Smith is an option there. There's so many guys that you could pick based off potential. And I think you have to go, now that I feel a little bit better about offensive line, BJ Ojolari is really interesting for Cincinnati. A team that really lucks out in this mock draft is New Orleans because this is a team that needs a quarterback, but are they willing to move up for it? Now, Will Levis falling this far is a blessing for them, and I don't see why they would move past him. Will Levis, if he does, he's probably not going to fall. But to me, in my personal opinion, Will Levis is just not – a top 10 player. He's just, he's just not. When you look at the film, when you watch what he did in Kentucky, I I just don't see it. And yes, there is potential there. And obviously you could say, well, what about Anthony Richardson? Go back and watch Anthony Richardson and go back and watch Will Levis. And you tell me there's not a significant gap between the two. One has incredible talent, incredible potential. And the other one has good potential, but he just doesn't have the consistency. And there's a lot of accuracy issues that I have big concerns about. And the fact that he already has a little bit of a a distance between him and the next guy above him who has just the same potential, if not better. I think that that's a big thing that we're not talking about. Now, this is unrealistic because I doubt that he's going to fall at the top 10, but that's not because of I'm drafting. And obviously teams are going to do probably overpay for a guy like Will Levis. But in this case, New Orleans benefits because he falls back. Next, we go to Philadelphia. Again, I, I've talked about this before. Philadelphia having two picks is just straight robbery. Now, yes, they did not win the Super Bowl, but they have the ability to reload and make sure that they are doing everything they can to make sure they beat whoever they face in the Super Bowl next year. They have all the talent in the world to be able to get back there, and they've already addressed a need on defense. So we can look at looking at an edge player, looking at safety, looking at defense. Defense is really where they're going to need to, and I think people would agree once you look at what happened in the Super Bowl, you're going to need some players that can step up and be big time for you. Now, they already added Jordan Davis on the interior. Now, on the edge is where things could get really interesting. Isaiah Foskey, I don't really know if I I like taking him in the first round because he's still learning the position. I think that a player that could be extremely exciting we just saw him be super explosive at the combine. Jordan Davis's teammate, Nolan Smith. So we're going to give Philadelphia fans a lot of excitement by adding him to their to their defensive line, a defensive line that could be extremely talented once again. And a guy like Nolan Smith who just showed that, hey, he is not missing a step. He is just as explosive as he used to be before he got hurt. That's going to be really fun to watch. Then we go to Kansas City, and honestly, it feels like we can just add a wide receiver at, with a ton of speed and give them everything that they want. Uh, the perfect pick for that would be Jackson Smith and Jigba. What else could we do? We could add a tackle. Protecting Patrick Mahomes obviously is priority number one, two, and three. So you could do that, but I think because we want to be a little bit more fun, give them more of a exciting pick. A guy like Jackson, Jackson Smith and Jigba, who was explosive at Ohio State, you saw the, some of the games that he had. I think he is going to be really, really good once he's fully recovered and fully back to 100% in terms of training and whatnot. He is someone that can make Kansas City's offense even more explosive, which is really scary to say.